how do I decide what information I trust? This question came to mind recently as I've been interested in street epistemology now for over a week. And uh, I've heard the term before and I thought, you know, epistemology, that's such a huge term. I'm just a country boy philosopher. I don't need to look at what that word means or look into it anymore. That's, that's you know, Christian Moore, Patrick Smith level stuff. I don't need to get into that. I'm not some wise philosopher. And uh, then I did actually look into street epistemology a bit more. And oh my gosh, what a great concept that is. And of course, we've all been using parts of it over the years, but it's an it's a nicely packaged way of thinking and, and getting to, to how one comes to conclusions. And so essentially what it is, is it's a, a series of smart questions, and they'll be slightly different for every claim. But anytime I make a claim now, I need to think about a number of questions. So if I say, um, I, I know that Biden caused high gas prices, then I would have to ask myself a series of questions about how I came to know this claim. Um, and in asking myself these questions, I'm likely to realize that I don't really know it with a high level of confidence. I suspect it, and I might not be able to prove to myself that it is true or not true completely. But if there was a scale of 1 to 10 on how certain I am, I start out at a 10. I absolutely know that Biden caused gas prices to double in the first year or two of his presidency. If that's my claim, and then I start examining it, I'll probably come to the conclusion that I don't really know that. And I have to follow this information that I've received, go down these rabbit holes to figure out what the what the truth is. Well, that is a challenge that I'm facing, is there's a particular issue. So, of course, I say to myself, I say, okay, I, I have this cool new, new tool that I have a very elementary understanding of, but enough that I'm going to start exercising it. And what is a what is a belief of mine that I hold that is is pretty strong, that is different from what most human beings believe? And uh, why don't I challenge that and see if it's really, really true? Or if maybe I'm the one that's wrong, maybe the mainstream, maybe the main current is correct in this case. So let me examine it. Well, the one I chose is uh, the claim that other people make that I don't know the whole world is, but I would say 90% of the powers that be or who be are claiming. And that this is essentially that man has caused, humankind has caused material warming of the earth or have has cha- made the climate change somehow and as a result earth is headed for a catastrophe and humans need to change their behaviors their way of living in order to change the global climate and therefore therefore uh, not having it melt down or just be destroyed or or whatever. So that that's the official claim, and I think I'm being honest about that. Uh, I, I think that is what is being said, maybe in different words, but that's essentially the claim. And then my counter argument, counter claim is, I don't think so, and I I haven't had persuasive evidence to make me believe that any of this is true. And so then somebody's made a claim. I've made a counterclaim. It it seems to me that now if I want to have an honest, true intellectual conversation with myself in my head or with other folks, that I ought to now look for a little bit of proof for my claim. And other folks ought to look for some proof uh, for their claim. Well, how, how do I go about doing that? I can look at just observation. I can look at me as a uh, a witness. I can look at it, and this is essentially anecdotal evidence. I can just say, okay, I've been alive for 50 years, kind of, you know, laying them on my back and watching the clouds move for 45 years, uh, but not really paying that much attention to to weather patterns, even for the last 
30 years. And that is one of the differences between weather and climate is that weather patterns, weather doesn't really become climate until at least 30, 40, 50 years. So just because today it's hot, you don't say there's a climate change. That's a weather issue. If it's really, really hot for five years in a row, that's still not a, a climate issue. That's still weather. It's not until it's been happening for 30 or 40 or 50 years that now it moves over into the climate uh, side of the house. Well, I haven't, quite honestly, I have not paid close enough attention to be a personal witness to significant climate change over the years. I've moved from place to place, so I can't really say, pull my journal out and say, yeah, the, the daily average temperature here in my homestead for the last 90 years has been blah, 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 and then compare my numbers and provided I'm using the same thermometer and I have it calibrated annually. Um, I, I don't have that kind of personal proof that's quality scientific evidence. So then where do I turn for my information? Do I turn to somebody who has a, a crystal energy uh, bewitching stick who is able to tell that the climate has or hasn't changed or that, that kind of witch doctor stuff? No. Well, where do a lot of people look? They look for the oceanic temperatures. Well, who does those? Well, various governments around the world do those. Who does the the average temperature uh, in New York City uh, at by the minute uh, for the last century or two? Well, that would be the government that does that. So first of all, we're dealing with government employees. And maybe scientists are the best among government employees, but you're still not probably not graduating at the top of your class from the best <laughs> science university in the world and going to work for the government. You're probably going to work doing something useful. If you're if you're really smart and creative and a good thinker, you're probably getting a real job. And then if you don't, then you're going to the EPA and, and that kind of stuff. And, and then you get a good secure thing. And I'm not denying that the EPA probably has better health insurance than some independent uh, research institute. Anyway, that's a segue. No, that's a, a tangent, not a segue. Segways when you're connecting two different things, I believe. Got that word wrong. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, where do I get information that I can really, truly trust? Is it from NOAA? Is it from the EPA? Is it from the uh, press outlet in the, in the UK, the, the Telegraph or Telegram or whatever that is? Uh, is it the New York Times or the Washington Post? Or where do I go to get my information? What's, what sources do I trust? And... Well, I don't trust the media. I, I just don't trust the media. And the media, it doesn't really exist. That's a that that's a word to describe people who go out and report things, uh, either by videos or newspapers or articles in magazines or uh, newscasts or whatever. These these are just people who are saying things, and because that is often manipulated behind the scenes. And not always in a nefarious, horrible, you know, conspiracy kind of way. But if Coca-Cola is sponsoring a company, they're probably not going to do a report on how it's just been determined that Pepsi is way healthier than Coca-Cola. Uh, they're not going to do that. So things are being skewed and twisted, et cetera, et cetera. And in the last years, I don't know how many, at least last 20 years, uh, normal corporate media, I'm not even going to call it that, just media, is largely reliant upon press releases. And so governments will do a press release, and the more ready for the paper it is, the better for the paper, or the blog, news blog, outlet, whatever it is, it's so much easier for them to just take it, copy, paste it into their newspaper, and then put it out. And then, it, oh, there's the fact. Well, no, that's just what the government's perspective was. That's what the government wanted you to believe. They they cherry-picked something good that they wanted some credit for in their story. They left out all the bad. They added only the good parts. And then, well, well it was in the newspaper. you got to believe it. It was in the newspaper, and it came from government sources. Got to trust it. Well, no, absolutely not. I, I certainly know better than that. So then, using street epistemology, the question would be, okay, Shepard, I got you. Good points. Um 
What information do you trust? Where could you get information that you would trust? So I'm happy to go out and look for it, but just tell me where it would need to come from if you're going to trust it. I don't know. And that's my challenge. And that's what I'm kind of, I'm putting this out here to the world saying, I'm not telling you to, I'm not asking for you to tell me who it is that I should trust. That's obviously got to be my choice, but I'm looking for a a system or a a method that you use that has proven beneficial, accurate, true uh, on where you get information. Do I go to the government, to some .gov website and download some 300-page PDF and sift and sort through it and trust that information? What if I thought, hey, I, I think that the uh, you know, a few years have passed now. It's probably a good idea. The the whatever uh, needles have been fixed up so that they will keep me from getting sick. Um, and I'm trying to leave out keywords that'll be flagged and and make one of those little boxes appear below the video. Actually, this yeah, I don't know if this will be a video or not, but um, I'm trying to avoid that so by not actually saying what I think. So good job, thanks for that YouTube. Good job uh, helping me speak my mind and. And be open and not guarded and just speak my speak my truth. Um, where do I get this information? I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, I am so tempted to say, well, NOAA itself reported that these were the annual temperatures, blah, blah, blah. Well, if I'm going to trust that information, why am I not trusting all government information? And the street epistemologist would then ask exactly that question, would say, oh, well, then what is your system for deciding which .gov information you believe is true and which you don't believe is true. When something comes out that isn't what you have come to believe over the years, is that just automatically not true? But then if it supports your confirmation, if it confirms your bias, then it is true? Well, it's an excellent question. That's a fair question. And I think that I have for many years done that. And I've cherry-picked I've just taken information that I like, that supports what I believe, and there's my proof. Well, I don't know how to go about doing this. So on the one hand, I think, hey, why don't I contact Paul Burgess? I interviewed him recently. Brilliant guy, a good climate scientist. And why don't I ask him these questions? Well, he's he's very passionate about what he believes in, and it's... He's not so much as a, of a guy who you have a conversation with as you ask a question, and then he provides many, 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 many minutes of very good information thereafter. But so it's not really a back and forth kind of conversation. So who else can I go to to say, well, how do I find out what is really truly true and what the variables are um, for sea level rise or sea level increases or whatever it's called? I I don't know enough about science to know if Obama, there's this stuff, Obama just bought a mansion that's down by the seashore, it's a beachfront, and it's on low land, and if he was really worried about climate change, he wouldn't do that. Well, that's not fair. Um, He's only going to be around for another, what, 50 years best? At best. Um, Well, (laughs) I don't know if that'd be best, but at most. And if he's going to be here for 50 years and sea level increase is expected to be, what is it, a, a inch in 100 years, then a half an inch isn't going to hurt his property or probably within his kids' lives, if he even has kids, I don't know. That So that's not a good argument. He's He might be buying a temporary place that his, he can enjoy for the rest of his life and that his, his kids can enjoy. And then, okay, maybe by the time the grandkids get here, uh, the water has risen to be half an inch uh, or an inch higher and now the house still wouldn't be underwater for another century or, or two centuries or three centuries. So that's that's a bad argument. I'm not defending that dude. I don't like Obama. Um, but I, I'm saying that that is not a good attack against him or that there isn't climate change happening at the rate that the, the world rulers say that it is. So where do I get that information? How do I know? And, and is Nantucket or wherever... Uh, I don't know, Iowa, wherever his oceanfront property is, is that the place to measure it? Or are there swellings and risings and fallings? And well, no, you have to measure it at 12 places throughout the world. And well, it also depends on the time of year. And 
I, I don't know. Is it something that for two years after every La Nina, the water's half an inch higher anyway? And then for the two years after El Nino, it's two inches lower? Or I, I have no idea about this stuff. So then who do I go to? And, and your answer might be, well, why don't you find a, a university who you trust and, or that you trust and uh, go to that university and talk to the climatologist professor there? Well, how do you become a climatology professor at a university? Is it by being the best in your field and honest and, and really seeking truth and, and speaking things that aren't mainstream? Well, of course not. You're not going to make it up to the top and be a department head or a lead professor if you're speaking your truth your whole life. You'd never get tenure if you were doing that in the years before that. So you've, you've got to be somebody who gets along with the establishment, who plays by the good old boys system, plays by their rules. Um, yeah, so you, you can't really go to, to that person. It's just it's going to be biased one way or the other. Um, and I don't want I don't want biased information information. I want it to be as, as little bias as possible. I don't think it can ever be perfect, but as little as possible. Well, so if I can't go there and I can't go to .gov, where can I go to get this information? And, and how do I determine which .gov information is good and which isn't? Like, is the, is the .gov information on the number of robberies that happened in the United States in 2008 and the number that happened in 2015, is there a better source of information to, or a better source to get that information? I don't know. Maybe the, the crime index, the, the U.S. government's crime index is the best place to get that. Maybe the NOAA is the best place to get climate information, sea level rise and such. I don't know. So I guess this, this whole rant is more of a, a question. Who do you trust? And I guess even more than that, no, that's not my question. Because I don't want the answer to be, well, you can trust the University of New Hampshire in Dover. Well, no, I, that's not going to satisfy me. I, I, I want the system of how I determine which information I trust and which information I don't. And, and so then, big, long, pregnant pause here, because I, I suspect that it's going to be very difficult for somebody to give me an answer that I'm going to say, oh, I love that. That satisfies me. Now I have confidence in, in going out and seeking information. I think that the answer is probably going to look something kind of like this. I don't know. I struggle with the same thing. Um, I don't know where you can get absolutely true, perfect, good information. So you just kind of have to trust your gut as you read the Yale and the, uh, the Stanford reports and cross-reference the one from uh, this place in Japan, and you hear Paul Burgess's take on it, which is kind of an intellectual climatologist response, and then you listen to the abbreviated talking head news person's argument on the opposite side, and you just kind of have to guess. Well, that kind of sucks, but I don't know how to get around it. I don't know how to get around just guessing how to get information on things, how to, how to find places that I trust. So I guess it would be fair if I, if you have, have invested almost 20 minutes into listening to me blather here, it'd be fair for me to tell you exactly what it is that I'm, I'm asking of you. And that's what this video is, is it's a, a genuine ask for a short, simple answer, a system on how I can determine what sources of information are to be trusted and to what degree. Um, if you have that information or some good ideas for me, I would love to hear it. Um, if you are a little bit, maybe not such high IQ person and you want to argue one little point that I made as an example in, the, in, in, in this talk, um, please don't. Um, this is more for the, the smarter people. I'm looking for somebody, this is about how to think, how to find information, how to know what to trust, um, not just looking and saying, well, yeah, but Paul Burgess got divorced, so obviously somebody didn't trust him. Yeah, no, I'm not looking for that kind of crap. Um, like, how do you find good information that you can trust? How do you evaluate that information to see if you can use it as evidence and that it will be correct to a high degree of uh, 
accuracy. How do, you, how do you know what to trust? Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for thinking about this. Thank you for hopefully somebody giving me an awesome answer that I can uh, build into a good way of thinking and help challenge myself and find myself wrong in some areas and right in some areas and find some good truths. Have a wonderful rest of your day, y'all. Thank you.